Hello, calculus students. Welcome back. Here's another test prep walkthrough to help you out. Don't forget that you should be trying all of these problems on your own before you watch this video. Uh, and it's also a good idea even to talk with other students about them just to try and help each other out. And then you resort to this if you can't figure these out. Okay, so the first one is we just need to take the derivative of this. In order to take the derivative, we will end up having to use the quotient rule. We have something here divided by that, two different little functions, so we're going to do the quotient rule, which is, uh, let's see, derivative of sine is going to be cosine of the square root of x times, now you got to do the derivative of the inside of sine. The inside of this is just the square root of x. Let me just remind you real quick, the square root of x derivative, you're going to get really good at this because you'll do it over and over again. Its derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Or in other words, it is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay, so that right there is the derivative of the square root of x. Okay, so we did this, the first part. Now we're going to subtract. Now we do this one left alone. Oh, wait, wait. I'm messing up already. We just did the derivative of the top. Now you have to times it by the derivative of the bottom. Or not the derivative of the bottom, just times it by the bottom left alone. Holy cow, I'm confusing myself. Derivative of the first, and then the second one is left alone. That's what that is. So the first one's derivative, second one left alone. Minus. Now we're going to leave the first one alone. So sine of the square root of x. So don't touch that one. And now we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the bottom. So times, and the derivative of the bottom is 1 over 2 square root of x because I figured that one up here. So I'm just reminding us. And now this is all over, holy cow, this is all over the denominator squared. And the denominator squared is just x. Okay, so there's your, there is your derivative. Now what you have to do is figure out how, with the algebra, how you can simplify this. Okay, so just try and cancel here what you can, uh, manipulate it. My, and the suggestion that I would make, give you is those cancel, and then you take this whole thing, and instead of dividing it by x, you multiply it by 1 over x. And that should help you get the right answer. Number two here is the definition of the derivative. This will be a problem you'll see on the AP exam where you have to recognize what the original function was. So we did this back in unit two, uh, and this is why we did it, because now you know so much more about derivatives. So here's it, here it is. The original function has x plus h plugged into it. Whoops, x plus h. There, that's better. Okay, so, and then it's going to be minus, so it's f of x plus h minus f of x. So our function is just cosine x. That's all it is. Can you, tell, can you see that? f of x is equal to cosine x. So the x plus h, the x is going to be a pi over 2. So what we're really trying to do is, if this is the definition of the derivative, it means we are looking for what is the derivative when you plug in a pi over 2. That's what this whole thing is. All right, so this is what you have to think about. There's the original function. Just take its derivative, plug in a pi over 2. Number three is a challenging one. It took me a little bit to get this one uh, because of this phrase is four times. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So if the rate of change of f at x equals c is four times its rate of change at x equals one, then what does c equal? Well, rate of change is a fancy way of just saying derivative. So I need to know the derivative of f. So if I take the derivative of that, this is 2x to the 1 half. So its derivative is going to be 1 half times 2x to the negative 1 half. Okay, so let's clean that up. That would equal, uh, don't cancel these 1 halves because that 2 is inside the exponent, so be careful about that. This is going to become 1 over 2 square root of 2x. Oh, I forgot to times it by 2. Look, times it by, stupid chain rule. Times it by 2. Remember, I have to do the derivative of the inside. So if I times it by 2, then that means I'm going to have a times by 2 here, and it just cancels this 2 right here. That 2 is going to be gone. Okay. Uh, so there is the derivative of f. So what's it saying? It's saying that if we plug in a c, and we're going to compare it to plugging in a 1, when x equals 1 compared to x equals c. So let's just do this. Let's plug in a square root uh, plug in a c, so it's 2c, 
And then it, I know it's not going to equal. I'll get there in a minute. And then we'll plug in a uh, 1, right? So I'm going to plug in a 1 and plug in a C. So this says that x equals C plugged in is going to be four times larger than the one with just a one plug in. This one is bigger. So in order for me to say equals, if this one's bigger, I have to times this one by four in order to make them equivalent. Okay, so now you have an equation that you can solve. This is how you set it up, and you just solve for C. Number four is a pretty basic calculator one. If you notice on these, this other one back here, number three, it said we could use a calculator, but it really wasn't that necessary. This one, a calculator, is very helpful. And all you have to do with the TIA-84s, at least, is you hit Math 8. and then Because Math 8 lets you do the derivative. So whatever calculator you're using, just take the derivative of this thing and plug in a 2. That's all you have to do. Last problem. I'm assuming you've already read this. All this stuff is actually the definition of the mean value theorem. When we say when is the instantaneous velocity, that's instantaneous rate of change, equal to the average velocity. So when we take these two things and set them equal to each other, that is the mean value theorem. So in other words, it's when does f prime equal the average rate or the average velocity. So the that is the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. OK, so average velocity or average rate of change is this. It's just the slope between two points. And our x values are going to be from 0 to 3. They, that's our interval. So there's our 0 and 3. And you've got to plug those in here to get your y values. And then, of course, set it equal to the derivative. That's how you solve number 5. And then you'll have to solve for what x value that is. And that is, yep, that's the last one. Okay, good luck on that master check.